Let's welcome the candidates for 2012 in the Iowa caucuses. Six presidential candidates, no countdown clock, and real conversation. You've never seen anything quite like the Thanksgiving Family Forum in Iowa. This is the Citizen Link Report. I'm Stuart Shepard along with my friend and colleague, Carrie Gordon Earl, our Senior Director of Issue Analysis. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Stuart. This was something. I mean, we had uh, pretty much all the leading contenders for president sitting around a table, and they, because of the nature of the questions, they put away their talking points and sounded like human beings. I've never seen anything like this before in a presidential year when it comes to getting candidates together. I was struck by how comfortable they were from the moment they walked out and sat at this kind of oval table, which looks like my table at Thanksgiving. <laughs> They were you have so a big comfortable. House, well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not huge. quite that big, but uh, but they were so comfortable and so relaxed. And the questions and the answers were candid, and they were unique. But what really struck me was they listened to each other. The fact you didn't have a timer or gotcha questions. At what point? Um, former Senator Rick Santorum talked for seven or eight minutes, and you just wouldn't have that kind of depth in any of these other forums. So I was really struck by that. Yeah, and, and we didn't see the usual reporter sitting at the little table down low in the dark trying to, to say something to get them to, to start a fight or say something that'll get the headlines the next day. They actually got to talk. I mean, it was impressive with that. Usually we see the photos afterward. It always looks like this. What we saw this time was they were reaching out and patting yeah. each other on the shoulder and saying it's okay and we're supportive of each other. There, was, there were times when they were really bearing their souls, talking about struggles in their childhood, um, disease, hardship, and you could see the respect and almost the camaraderie between them, that there was almost a tenderness. And these are folks that in past forums looked like they were going to take each other's heads off. So <laughs> this, this was one of a kind. I've never seen anything like it. I was impressed. Yeah, and if you haven't gotten to see it, we do want to share just a little bit of it to give you a sense of what it was like. Here's the opening question from sneaker-wearing pollster Frank Luntz. Every debate begins with a specific policy question, but this is a little different. Someone on this stage hopes to be able to take the oath of office 14 months from now, and at the end of that oath are the words, so help me God. When you hear those four words, if you have the opportunity and the privilege to say them, what will come to mind? Well, I think they're very important. Uh, we take, a, those of us who have been in Congress and served in government, we take an oath frequently. We take an oath to uphold the Constitution. And that's what we do when we take an oath uh, when we're sworn in as president. We emphasize this. But I think what that does, it emphasizes it even more so because of the significance and the importance. And it reiterates the fact that we swear to uphold the Constitution and the rule of law. And to, this, uh, to me, this would mean that you're not only saying this you know, in front of a small number of people, not only in front of the nation, but before our God, which means the significance is that much greater. So those of us who have done this before, and I've taken my oath rather seriously, very seriously, and believe that I've done a very good job in upholding the Constitution, and even when sometimes it's difficult, and this to me would send the signal that by saying, so help me God, I really will obey the Constitution and that pledge. Anybody else? For me. Go ahead. It's really two things. So help me God means that I am ultimately responsible to God Almighty. And secondly, it is an expression in my view of asking for God to help me in such an important job. Congresswoman. Well, it reminds me that it was George Washington that added those last four words, so help me God. And after he added those four words, he reached down and he kissed the Bible. And I think it's because if there was any American who had seen the hand of God rising up this nation, it was George Washington. He literally said, without the aid of providence, we wouldn't have had this land. And I think the time that we're in right now in this country is also at such a critical time. Without his hand, we won't be able to get back on track. The um, words are so powerful. Being the president of the United States is got to be the hardest job in the world. And the idea that uh, one of us sitting around this table could do it with our own human intellect, our capability is beyond 
beyond any of us. And we have to have that eternal wisdom that comes from God. And so, so help me God is almost a plea. Uh, it's not part of an oath. I look at it as a plea. So God, uh, I've been driven to my knees multiple times as the governor of the state of Texas, Rick, making decisions that um, are life and death. They have huge impacts on people's lives. And to, to the idea that I could, the idea that I would walk into that without God Almighty holding me up would scare me to death. Uh, Senator Santorum, the people, the 3,000 people who are here believe that America's in trouble and believe that America's in pain. But this is all about setting priorities. You speak often of values, but what's the number one value that America has lost and how would you get it back? Well, I think it really talks about what we we're just talking about, which is understanding that America uh, is a country that was founded on the, on the concept that uh, our rights come to us from our creator, rights come to us from God, and that when God gives us rights, he doesn't say, well, here are your rights, just do whatever you want to do with them. That in fact, he has laws that we must abide by. Now, unlike Islam, where the higher law and the civil law are the same, in our case, we have civil laws, but our civil laws have to comport with the higher law. Our civil laws have to, and that's why the issue of abortion, as long as uh, abortion is legal, at least according to the Supreme Court, legal in this country, we will never have rest because that law does not comport with God's law, which says that all life has value. All life is created by, I knew you in the womb. Uh, Speaker Gingrich, you have written a great deal about the loss of values in this country. But you have, if you had to identify just one that you specifically want to see reinstilled and how you would do it, which one would that be? <clears throat> I think that's very easy. It would be to ensure that every American understood that we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, and therefore you had to explain the word creator. And I wouldn't have anybody teaching who felt uncomfortable explaining what the Founding Fathers meant when they said that our rights come from our creator, because it changes everything else. The, the, uh, secular is a term that comes actually from the Latin, seculare, meaning a century. And it basically says life is very limited, so you might as well get the most you can now. A belief in God is the precise opposite. It's a belief that we are all part of an eternity. And that eternity stretches behind us and ahead of us. And therefore, we have to measure what we do within the framework of God's greater plan. So, Carrie, that was an unusual question, but it also is the kind that you can't answer with the bullet points in 30 seconds. You've actually got to think about it a bit and speak from the heart. That's what is so unique about this forum. If anyone hasn't seen it and you've been frustrated by the other candidate debates, that you really didn't hear anything past the talking points, this is the one to watch because it forces those candidates to dig deep into their faith, into what motivates them, into the life-changing experiences that they've had with some really candid answers. And something else has happened, Stuart, it's really interesting. In the days right after the forum, you've had two candidates now that have come forward to say that they will sign pledges that they initially said they wouldn't. For Rick Perry, it is a marriage pledge uh, by the family leader, which was the host of this forum. And yeah. for Herman Cain, he has said that he will sign a Susan B. Anthony pledge about pro-life. So this may have had an impact on these candidates. The forum may have had an impact that they didn't expect. And perhaps that will bleed over into their ability to speak on these issues even more forthrightly. We should talk about how this whole thing came together. It, of course, as you mentioned, was hosted by the family leader. That's a group in Iowa that we're proudly associated with and work closely with. It was co-sponsored by us here at Citizen Link, as well as the National Organization for Marriage. We provided the satellite link and the web feed and all that. And uh, of course, our boss, Tom Minery, got to ask some questions at the forum. And, and part of what we had as far as influence was how the questions are going to be asked, what they're going to be about, had some input onto that. We wanted to give you an idea what happened after Tom got to ask his questions. Let me start with Mr. Kane, and anyone else can jump in if you'd like. 
Mr. Kane, when you are president, it is possible that Roe v. Wade will be overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, when that happens, the problem of abortion will be returned to the states. Will you indeed pursue a federal law banning abortion or a federal constitutional amendment banning abortion once and for all? If that legislation gets to my desk, I will absolutely sign it. And yes to the second part of your question. Now, by saying that the legislation gets, has to get to your desk, that belies the sense that you're really going to push Congress hard to get it to your desk. Will you push hard to get it to your desk, or will you simply sign it if it gets there? With all due respect, there are a lot of things that the president that I would push hard to do and yes, that would be one of them because I think that it should be overturned. So it wasn't to imply that I wouldn't heavily promote it and push it, but yes, it would be something that I would support and I would sign it. I think the main thing, the, the, the president can help promote, can push and pull, yes. But we gotta have that inertia coming from the Congress. So I'm clear about, yes, I will sign it and yes, I will help promote it Thank you. Uh, Speaker Gingrich, uh, would you care to weigh in on that? Well, <clears throat> I'm intrigued with something which Robbie George of Princeton has come up with, which is an interpretation of the 14th Amendment in which it says that Congress shall define personhood. That's very clearly in the 14th Amendment. And part of what I would like to explore is whether or not you could get the Congress to pass a law which simply says personhood begins at conception and therefore and that you could in the same law block the court and just say this, is, this will not be subject to review, which we have precedent for. You would therefore not have to have a constitutional amendment because the Congress would have exercised its authority under the 14th Amendment to define life and to therefore undo all of Roe versus Wade for the entire country in one legislative action. move on unless uh, someone else would like to weigh in on that. Dr. I, Paul. On the same subject, same yes. question. Um, on, on that, I have supported the amendment that defines life at conception, and I think that's important, but I don't endorse the idea that the enforcement should come from the federal government. We don't need another police force in Washington. We already have 100,000 bureaucrats running around with guns, so we don't need more enforcement. All acts of violence under our Constitution, like murder and uh, injury and robbery, uh, that's not a federal offense, it's a state offense, and laws do vary, so I would not want to repeal that provision. It was meant that it would be handled at, at the states. And we have to remember, when we tend to nationalize things, we expose ourselves to great danger, because when they make a mistake, it's national. This is the reason that we had Roe versus Wade. They should have never heard that case. They nationalized it. So I'm very cautious about uh, nationalizing, uh, nationalizing these laws. So it would be much better to uh, state when life begins, make the law enforcement at the, at the state level, which has been tr uh, traditional, but uh, it, it should not be that we uh, enforce this law at the national level, but there's no reason why we can't define when life begins. Stuart, it was interesting because Tom, as you could see, came back and asked candidate Kane a little bit more about his position for clarity. And as we mentioned just a moment ago, uh, Herman Kane has announced that he intends to sign a pro-life pledge so perhaps that exchange with Tom or just his interactions with folks there in Iowa and talking to the grassroots has helped him to realize that people are looking for a candidate that as president is going to do more than just give lip service. And of course, a president can't pass legislation on his own, but he can use that office as a bully pulpit to make that pro-life platform part of who he is. So again, I think this was a wonderful opportunity for folks who have been frustrated by not hearing social issue questions in the presidential debate so far. This this is the one to watch because we really got those questions in. We got some encouraging notes from our, our friends who watched this along with us.
course, they're watching it on their computers. I want to share a couple of them. Uh, Hannah writes, my friends and I watched the forum together and had rich conversation about the candidates afterward. In the past, I've not kept myself informed about political happenings, but thanks to Citizen Link, I'm taking steps to be aware of things that are happening in our country, especially as important decisions must be made in the next year regarding our leaders. Thanks again for all your work. And of course, we're happy to do that work. That's why we're here and what we do. And we appreciate your encouragement and affirmation. Uh, Carol writes, watched the entire Thanksgiving forum and was impressed by the decorum, content, and hearts of all the candidates. Really helped me hone in on the differences and similarities of them all. I'm leaning more to one candidate now that I really hadn't considered too much before. I was encouraged to see the large number of people who tuned in live to watch and hopeful that several times that number will take the opportunity to watch as they have time. And Carrie, indeed, uh, we had about 17,000 people who watched it live and we've seen several times that now who've watched it after the fact and those numbers continue to add up each day as it goes along. Well, it's gotten a lot of attention. I know uh, the Focus on the Family daily broadcast with our President Jim Daly on Monday featured clips from that as well. So this again is a wonderful opportunity for you to go online, to, to listen to the broadcast, to watch the forum and to find out things about these candidates. I learned things I didn't know and I'm a, I'm a political policy wonk. <laughs> I love this stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I learned insight into their hearts and again the tenderness, almost tenderness you could see as they were listening to each other share personal experiences and their faith in God. That, that was just touching. Yeah. It was really touching to see. All right. Thank you, Carrie. And if you haven't watched it yet, there is, it's uh, featured on the citizenlink.com website. If you'd like, like to watch the entire video, and as Carrie mentioned, if you go to the page for the Focus on the Family broadcast, they uh, have a half hour where they talk uh, about it and, and share clips from it today. Uh, thanks to all of you who have written to share your encouragement and affirmation and your thoughts. You, you may always write to us at mail at citizenlink.com. We encourage you to pray for America as we all decide who we think should be our next president. And remember, stand tall and be heard.